What's up everyone? In this video, I'm just taking a look at the different color profile settings that I have for the Panasonic GH5. If you're new here, my name is Caleb and I've been doing freelance video production since 2012, but this channel is to help you make your own videos, whether you just started or you've been making them for a while, whether you use the GH5 or any other camera, if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now we know the GH5 has some great color profiles like the natural color profile, uh, Cine D, Vlog. So we're just gonna take a look at those and the settings that I have that I think give a pretty good picture. I know that I've been happy with it when I've used these. And we'll also take a look at the different IRE levels and those types of things for these different color profiles. So the first one I'm gonna start with is V-Log. And we all know that the V-Log is a separate purchase for the GH5 or the GH4. And one of the things to remember about this V-Log that you purchase the key that comes in a box and you have to upload to your GH5. One of the things to remember is that it is a light version of the log profile. So you're not gonna have the full S curve that you normally would in a regular log profile. And so when we actually go into some of the color adjustments, um, one of the things that we're gonna notice is that once I get over here is that there's not gonna be a whole lot of changes that I make to this color profile. So really the only options that you have to change are the sharpness and noise reduction. And honestly, I just leave those alone. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my GH5 to V-Log so that we're ready to roll with that. And so I've got V-Log up here. And one of the things to remember is that when you're shooting with V-Log, the best color that you're gonna get is with 10-bit. Now these are gonna be huge files that you're gonna to have to deal with, but the 10-bit color is gonna be way better than the 8-bit color because the 8-bit color, you're gonna see some uh, glitches, it's gonna get a little mushy, and some of those colors are gonna really break down. And where I've seen those colors break down in 8-bit V-Log footage is in the sky. So if you have like a blue sky, sometimes it's gonna get a little mushy in there. But I've also seen it in the reds in you know some skin tones. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are in some type of 10-bit uh, color format. So 4K 10-bit, Cinema 4K 10-bit, um, one of those profiles there you're gonna wanna be in so that you have the opportunity to get some really good footage with the V-Log. So shooting with V-Log, you're definitely gonna wanna keep track of where things are on the waveform. And so usually with skin tones, you're gonna keep your skin tones kind of around that 40 to 50 range. 55 probably being the highest, 60 IRE is gonna be pushing it. So that 40 to 50 range is kind of a safe zone for skin tones while shooting V-Log. And one of the things I love using are the Zebras on the GH5. I think it's a great tool, a great exposure tool. And so you're gonna wanna set your Zebras on the GH5. So let's go in here and set these levels Zebra one, we're gonna set for skin tone highlights, and zebra two, we're gonna set as highlight clipping for the overall image. So when we go in here and we go to set our zebra pattern, our zebra stripes, and remember zebra one is for skin tones, and we don't wanna go, really we don't wanna go above 55. So we're gonna set zebra one to 55 for V-Log. And zebra two, we're gonna set at um, 75, because remember, it's not a full S curve. So remember, you can't go up to 90, 95 with the highlights. It's a light version. You don't have that full range. So you have your skin tone highlights at set at 55, because you don't wanna go above that, and then you have your overall highlight clipping set around 75. So if you have a few bucks extra laying around, definitely try out V-Log for the GH5 and see what kind of shots, see what kind of color, see what kind of dynamic range you can get with that. So this might actually be a good time to talk about something I just did. I just opened a LUT store on my website. I have a link down in the description. And at the end of this video, I'll just kind of walk you through where to find it. And I got a little something special for you maybe a discount code. All right, so if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I really like using the natural color profile, especially for quick turnaround videos. So what you're looking at here is actually shot with the natural color profile. So make sure you check out my video about why I choose the natural color profile really most of the time when I'm shooting with my GH5. All right, so let's go in and let's select the natural color profile. 
Here we're on vlogs, we just got done with that. So let's go into, it's right after Vivid, I believe. There it is, the natural color profile. And let's just walk through some of the settings that I have set up here. So for contrast, I actually set that to minus two. And then for sharpness, I take that down all the way. I personally like a little bit softer of an image, so I put that all the way down to minus five. You play around with it, you put it where you wanna have it. Um, so for noise reduction, I'm gonna leave that at zero. For saturation, I'm gonna take that down one notch. And now this one is a little interesting. The hue is a little interesting. I've actually been playing around with this. Normally I keep it around zero, but my friend Nate, who's been using some of the natural color profile as well, actually takes that hue down a notch and puts it at minus one. So you play around with that. You see how you like it. I've been using it a little bit with a minus one and I kind of like some of the you know skin tones that you're getting, but for right now, I'm gonna actually keep it at zero. So you go test those waters, see what you like with that hue in the natural profile here. So I'm gonna set this as my color profile right now. So one of the things I really like about the natural color profile is I feel like I get some pretty good colors coming right out of the image, especially in the greens and blacks. And if you go and check out that video that I mentioned earlier, I'll kind of explain a little bit of that more. So now that we're in the natural color profile, what we're gonna do is go in and adjust the zebras again, because this is totally different than Vlog. And so our levels on those zebras can be way different. So for skin tones on the waveform for interviews, that type of thing, usually I keep that around 60 to 70 IRE with this natural color profile. So when we go into the zebra pattern, that's kind of determining where we're gonna set those zebras. And zebra one, remember, which represents, you know, um, skin tones and the highlights on the skin tones, that type of thing. I am actually going to set that at 70 because remember I don't want to go above 70 IRE for skin tones on the waveform and so zebra 2 which represents our highlight clipping the overall image I'm going to actually set that up to 95 because we have a lot of give when it comes to that highlight. So there we have our zebra pattern set up for the natural color profile and we're ready to shoot. And I found that if I stay within that range, I usually get a pretty good overall image, even though I don't have the dynamic range like I would have with like the log profile. So what's your favorite color profile to shoot in with the GH5? Let me know down in the comments. I kind of like this conversation because there is definitely a wide range of color profile shooters with the GH5. All right, so the last color profile that we're gonna talk about is Cine D, and now I'm not a huge Cine D shooter, but I did put together recently a video of color grading some Cine D footage, but I had this settings kind of extreme because I was just kind of running some tests, and I actually had the settings at minus five, minus five, zero, minus five, zero. And I don't think that's necessarily the recommended uh, version for that, but I was just running some tests, and I wanted to try it with that. All right, so let's go in here and choose uh, Cine D to make sure we're rolling with that one. And that is not too far away, right after some of the customs, we'll go to Cine like D. I don't recommend the minus five, minus five, zero, minus five, zero. So you're definitely gonna wanna play around with some of these settings, but from what I've seen, Ryan Harris, who is a big Cine D shooter, his settings seem to work pretty well with this Cine D profile. And obviously check out his videos, but what he's gonna do is he's gonna put his contrast at minus one, and he's going to put the sharpness all the way down to minus five. The noise reduction, he's gonna leave at zero. Um, saturation, he puts down to minus one, and then he leaves the hue at zero. And again, I don't know if this would be similar to the natural color profile where you might wanna play around with that hue a little bit, take it down a notch, see if you're getting better skin tones. That's one of the things I've noticed with Cine D is that the skin tones sometimes are off. I don't know, are you a Cine D shooter? Let me know down in the comments if you've noticed anything with the Cine D skin tones. So maybe play around with those settings just a little bit, maybe take that hue down and see if you get a little better skin tones. All right, so now we have our Cine D settings up and ready to roll and then a lot like the natural color profile, 
those waveform settings are gonna be very similar to the natural color profile. So you're gonna kind of look for skin tones within that 60 to 70 range. And again, when you go into the zebra pattern, you are going to set your skin tones at 70 and then zebra two, which is gonna represent your highlight clipping for the overall image, you're gonna keep around 95. So I haven't noticed really any difference from the natural color profile to using Cine D with some of these settings. You can really just kind of keep those zebras together. Now, one of the things that you're gonna to wanna to do is set up a shortcut so you can kind of shuffle through those zebras real quick. And I just use the up button here on the GH5 and I can go and I can switch the zebra stripes really quick, turn them off, go to the skin tones, go to the overall image, and then I know that my highlights will be clipping at those different percentages. So this was a really quick run through on some of these color profile settings, but I hope they help you out. Again, make sure you're playing around with these settings and getting the look that you want with your GH5. All right, so I'm just gonna take a sec and I'm gonna walk you through the LUT store that I created on my website. I'd love for you to go just check it out. I mean, even if you don't buy anything, that's totally fine, but at least go check it out and see if there's anything that would work for you and your GH5 cinematic journey. All right, so when you click on the link in the description, it's gonna bring you right here to this page, whoverwritesmedia.com slash store, and this is where I have, for right now, my different GH5 LUTs and looks, and I encourage you to go check it out. I hope to use this as kind of like a full production area where I hope to work on some light leaks and some other things like that. So, but right now I've got the GH5 LUTs and you can do um, a quick view if you want and kind of see what's in there. Otherwise you can actually click on the product and go through the different looks in each package. And in the description here, you're gonna see that these are .cube files and they work with anything where you can use a .cube file like Premiere Pro, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve Luma Fusion, and it's going to give you the contents of what's in here. So you're going to have however many LUTs come in each package, but with each package, you're also going to get a GH5 Vlog starter LUT. So these aren't specifically made for Vlog, but if you use this starter LUT, which gets your Vlog footage to a Rec 709 color space, then you can put this these LUTs right on top of there. So all you need to do is hit add to cart and then when it goes to the checkout and go to checkout, I want you to use this discount code. Put in your email and then use the discount code YouTube10 and you'll receive 10% off your price. YouTube10 and apply that. And you'll get 10% off the price of these packages. If you wanna get all of them, use that, you'll get 10% off this whole thing. So make sure you go check that out. And I'm kind of excited about this store. But you might wanna check this out. I actually do have a free LUT pack that you can download. Just click on the link down below that says free LUT pack. And I actually have in there the YouTube punch LUT that I use pretty much for all of my YouTube videos. And you can have that one for free as well as three others. Just go to the website, put in your email address, and then you're good to go to download. Thanks for sticking around this long on this video. If you have time, it'd be awesome if maybe you stuck around and watch one of these videos that's popping up on your screen right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.